Cheers! Welcome, Welcome to, to movie, movie Bitches! bitches. A retro Review Episode 8! Uh, we have new Retro Review shirts um, that are pretty great. I'm kind of obsessed. So if you want anything having to do with this, moviebitches.threadless.com. It's pretty great. If you want anything to do with this. Well, like the shirt, not my body. So, tonight we're reviewing Heathers. Heathers, a killer comedy. We felt like it was appropriate. Yeah. The time has come. The, yeah, the time Review has come. Review Heathers. <laughs> I love this movie. Oh no, controversial, controversial. We haven't talked about it. I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. I think this movie is too dark for me. Okay. I like this movie. I get it. It's funny. It's twisted. It's blah, blah, blah. I don't know. I just get so icked out. The ick factor is a little too high for me where I'm just like, no, no, this is, you're, you're way too complicit. Like. Oh my god, the, the mugs got switched and now my friend is dead. Like, right. that's one thing. Oh my god, this guy is running around and that other man is murdered and like now I'm just gonna shoot him. I feel like she needed to be like shocked and confused and then he shoots him. So he ends up shooting both. And then she's like, this is too much. You're crazy. I need to step back. I guess. For me, it is just paper thin, on that paper thin line. It, I don't know how, and every time I watch it, almost it's a different experience. And sometimes, yes. depending on my mood, I'll yes. be like, oh, this time it was it was absolutely right on that line, perfect. And then sometimes I'll be like, well, oh, that was pretty rough. I don't know. So maybe, you know, it kind of depends on your mood and maybe. Like, the state of the world. Um, <laughs> it's a controversial movie. I mean, sure. to this day, it's a controversial movie, you know. And back then, it was couldn't get made practically but then they they well i was very excited so upon this viewing i realized that denise denovi was the producer for this movie and i was like fuck yes like she maybe is like the producer of fabulous cunt island because <laughs> i was just like her name just keeps popping up and she is a fabulous cunt like i was like yes she made this movie happen. True. And a ton of Nicholas Sparks movies. <laughs> like, I don't know, I feel like she's cool. Like, this movie's clearly a satirical joke on, like, how important everything feels in high school and how right. dramatic everything feels in high school and how all of those sort of after-school specials of like, oh no, and then I got on speed and I killed myself, you know, and it's like, there's all this like, teenage suicide, yeah. don't do it. Don't do it, you know, or whatever, <laughs> like reefer madness, like, uh, you know, or whatever. It's totally making fun of all of that and it is very dark in doing that, but I, I appreciate that more than like a Mean Girls where it's, Mean. I mean, they're doing different things. Yes. But like, somehow this is more interesting. Mean Girls, I think, is very much inspired by Heather's. Yeah. But also much more mainstream. Much more mainstream. Right. This like is, no one dies in Mean Girls. No, this is much edgier. Yes. And so I appreciate it because it's doing something that's harder, and it's for me most of the time doing it very well. Yes. With all really good black comedies, it's different every time. Yeah. You're like. Ah, Long story short, Heather's gonna win this thing. I mean, Heather's just gonna win. I mean, if really, if Veronica is gonna if win. If Veronica does win. Heather, it's your turn. <laughs> now, Heather, it's Heather's turn. Heather. What's your damage, Heather? <laughs> this movie's so fucking quotable. It is. Fuck me gently with a chainsaw. Who do you think I am, Mother Teresa? <laughs> yeah, it starts and. They're playing croquet. Kesara Sarah's playing. Yeah. I feel like it's very appropriate, right? It's it's setting this tone of ridiculousness yes. and like, don't worry about it. Too. Like it's basically being like, don't think about this too hard. Like, we're making a joke. Sure. Whatever. I did realize watching this movie, I have no idea how to play croquet. No, I don't really understand. So what are you gonna do, Heather? Take the two shots or send me out? Did you have a brain tumor for breakfast? So are you supposed to try and hit other people's balls? Or are you supposed to try and get it through the little loopy things? You're supposed to try and get it through the loopy things. But I think if you hit their ball, then you can... Send them out. Whack their ball. Or was... take two moves. Why? Why not? Why? <laughs> Come on. Why? 
<laughs> well, I read that Heather Graham was supposed to be one of the Heathers, but her parents were like, no, you can't be in this movie. Yeah. <laughs> it's fair. And all of Winona Ryder's like, because at this point, Winona Ryder is like famous, right? And all of her agents, everybody was like, this is career suicide. I mean, not to make a joke, but yes. Um, <laughs> you can't do this movie. This will ruin everything. Blah, blah, blah. And she was like, fuck you guys. I'm doing it anyway, basically. Wow. I mean, I feel like this is, well, I mean, like Beetlejuice and stuff, but like this is one of her most lasting Sure. You know, movies. I don't think people are walking up to her to be like, oh my god, remember when you were in Bram Stoker's Dracula? <laughs> like, more often than not, they're probably saying, remember when you shoplifted? Like, over, you know, Dracula. <laughs> remember when she shoplifted? Remember no. when? You don't remember that? No. That was like the biggest deal. Everyone was like, free Winona. I do vaguely remember that. She like, lost her mind and like, just blatantly went into a department store and just like, started shoplifting and was like, had a mental break basically and then went to court and was like, I had a mental breakdown. Like she was like, I don't even know. I don't even remember like stealing all that shit. You don't remember all of that? The thing that always bothers me about this movie is, so she's writing in her journal all the time. Yes. Her penmanship is atrocious. And yet she can supposedly and yet she can like, like copy everyone. Penmanship. Yeah. It's atrocious. Dear diary. My teen angst bullshit has a body count. <laughs> She's wearing the monocle. <laughs> just so many funny choices. Yeah. We're just like, of course you're wearing a monocle. <laughs> because you're a pretentious, like, like yep. emo yep. teenager. Yes! You know what I mean? She might as well have been, like, writing in a typewriter or some shit. Well, back then it would have been more appropriate, but, like, if, it was made, if they remade it today... Can we talk about the fashion? Um... Yes. The like primary colors, blazers, shoulder pads, the hair, I feel like the this scrunchies. movie is like clueless meets mean girls with like a dark twist. Yeah. Well, this is lightning in a bottle. Sure. I mean, there's always been talk about, oh, Heather's two, Heather's two. It's like you can't, it just it wouldn't work. This movie rarely works. Or a TV show. Oh boy. I couldn't, I didn't, I couldn't do it. Mm hmm. Mm -mm. All of the just brightly colored tights and the loafers and the like, it's right on that edge of these clothes are atrocious. Yep. And I kind of like them. Yeah. But also <laughs> it was like they are atrocious, but so were all of the clothes of the time. You know what I mean? Sure. Like you look back and you're like, oh, what were we thinking? I always loved her like high-waisted jumper suspender when she's getting the slushy and the... Yes. I always liked that look. When she goes to the party. Speaking of the party, I always kind of am waiting for her to just burn down the party and like murder everyone. <laughs> I mean, like you know, she, she, like, she throws fuck the, this town. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> fuck these stupid boys and just like because she's you like, don't even deserve my fucking speech, right? <laughs> it's just like whoosh. But it doesn't happen. She just starts like a trash can fire. Well, then she's very much complicit in her own arson. Well, whatever. sure. That, but then, uh, but then it's like a choice. Right. You know what I mean? Like then it's her choice where she's like, you know what? Fuck this shit. I am bad, and I am gonna murder these people because they deserve to die. Then yeah, it's like she's taking sort of a like, stance. You don't know. Yes, she's playing playing dumb or is dumb a lot of the movie in what's happening. But yeah, she. I mean, I guess at the end she finally does like. Make a choice. Yes. So that's good. Totally. But like, in the end, you never is... really know if she liked it or not. Right. Like, really. In the end, when she's out there with like the cigarette, right? The sight gag of, he just exploded himself. She now looks like Roz in Frasier when the cherry's jubilee exploded into her face. And now her cigarette got lit from his exploding body. Yeah. And it's like halfway through. <laughs> God, Heather, you're such a pillowcase. <laughs> Such a pillowcase. You know what I was thinking? Mm -hmm. I wish that Becky had been a thing for this movie. Like Heather's and Becky's, right? Instead of Boogers. Where well, Boogers weren't really in this movie. That's purely a Carmen fantasy. That is. Yeah. Becky's would have been better for the for drag race. You're such a Becky. I'm still waiting for it doesn't happen. I'm still waiting for one of the queens to be like, no, I'm a Veronica. <laughs> you a Heather? No. I'm a Veronica. That's why the band The Veronicas 
are called the Veronicas. Really? Fun fact. Wow. Sometimes I feel like pop-up video. <laughs> died out towards the end but the beginning of the movie the soundtrack is very like Friday the 13th but with like sexy girls <sighs> Details are all here. Oh, yes. Well, I like that the, the bad guys are fucking assholes. Like, Heather is a fucking asshole. Sure. You know what I mean? Yeah, she's a cunt. She's a full-blown cunt. But, like, not a fabulous one. Like, a mean one. I mean, she's a little bit fabulous. A little bit. But also, no. She's too, God, like, Heather. mean. Heather. Bulimia is so 1987. <laughs> Bulimia is so 87. Can we talk about Christian Slater? Yeah, I can't believe we haven't actually talked about him yet. Greetings and salutations. Christian Slater is really cute in this movie. He is. I mean, he's like a psychopath. Okay, good. I'm just, I'm, I was concerned about you for a second. Not like, ooh, sexy, he kills people, but like, ooh, Christian Slater, you're looking good. He's looking, eh, I don't, I've never well, found Christian, he, that's a creepy picture like, there. He looks like a vampire. Yeah, it really does. <laughs> he looks like a weird, greasy vampire. <laughs> um... <laughs> Christian Slater is similar to Michael Douglas, where I'm like, when you work, you work. When you don't work, get away from me, I hate you. It's like very, <laughs> there's a fine line. Real creep but, creep weirdo. <laughs> real creep creep weirdo. Untamed heart, I'm into it, I'm into it. I like, I like it. He's got a monkey heart. Marissa Tomei is just like a little sassy, sad waitress. Well, Marissa Tomei is You know, it's great, it's great. We should definitely rewatch Untamed Heart. I was gonna say, we should definitely have Marissa Tomei to Fabulous Contile oh, Obviously. <laughs> But Christian Slater has that, like, James Dean, I'm kind of sexy and dangerous thing going on. Yeah. In this movie. Like, if More James else... Spader than James Dean. Oh, I'm into that. I like James Spader more than James Dean. I said it. I said it. I feel like it now makes sense why I like James Dean more. <laughs> You're not into that dark and mysterious weird sexy thing? No. Great. But I am into Moe's. Well, I mean... It makes sense, because James Dean was certainly playing for at least both teams. Um, no, I don't know. I did, Christian Slater's never really done it for me. And he doesn't do it for you, huh? No, he doesn't do it for me. But that's cool. As a, like, in this context of, I'm in high school, look at him. He's like this dangerous, you know, like, I'm an idiot high school teenage girl. Like, yeah. I was always the one that fell for, I was like always like, no, but like the sweet one. No, I usually was too. I was like, oh, Seth Green. You know, no. Oh. Like what was 13 going on 30, right? Where she like falls in love with like, like where she finally ends up with, who was, I don't even remember the guy that's in that movie. I think it's Mark Ruffalo. I think you might be right. So. No, I never wanted him. It was the kid, you know? It was the young one where you're like, no, the poor guy, he's just your friend. He wants to be more, but you put him in the friend zone. Like, well, have you seen Pretty in Pink? Yeah. So like you're a ducky guy. Sh sure. Which makes sense too, because he's also a mo. And maybe that's what it is. I think I identified with the nice sweet guys who never got the girl because that was me. Because secretly they're a homosexual. <laughs> it makes sense. It all makes sense now. But anyway, I get why Winona Ryder sure. is into him. Right, the bad boy. And he's like different from everybody. Yeah. And everyone else is Smarter. trying to be part of this clique. And he's like, fuck the establishment. Like, I get it. Yeah. And so it makes sense why. Well, and I do like that it like it it develops his character more and more throughout the movie where he really becomes this like Columbine-esque psycho. And you're like, no, but this makes me uncomfortable now. This is really icky. Yeah, at first he's just sort of like, oh, you ride a motorcycle? And then it's like, oh no. You oh. want to blow up the entire school. I mean, school. although in the first scene he does like pull a gun on those people. That is true. But it was blanks. <laughs> Doesn't this cafeteria have a no bags allowed rule? Well, they uh, seem to have an open door policy for assholes, though, don't they? What did you say, dickhead? <sighs> I'll repeat myself. He's just so very. Oh my god, yes, it's so oh very. God, how very. I just feel like I need to incorporate more Heather's lingo into my everyday life. I, I mean, I already do it, but like, I feel like more. So Veronica, uh, Heather, the head Heather, takes her to the college party and everyone there is just a complete fucking asshole. And she throws up her red slow, her slow she, her red slow she. 
She throws up her red slushie. Why don't you try to just... Ruins the party. Try to get the... Why? Who cares? Because I do. We're drunk anyway. <laughs> I've never heard this. Heather goes, You stupid fuck. You goddamn bitch. I'll tell everyone about tonight. Transfer to Washington. No one at Westerberg's gonna let you play their reindeer games. Yeah, I'm not playing your reindeer games. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the was, fuck are reindeer games? Well, sure. Tag? <laughs> what, what, what are these reindeer games? What, conceivably, what kind of games could reindeers play? Maybe yeah. flashlight tag. Rudolph can play flashlight tag because he's got his nose. Sex? That's not a game. Isn't it? <laughs> We're going to play sex. What? <laughs> I'm not playing anymore here. Reindeer, reindeer games! <laughs> okay. Tell me more. <laughs> like, but seriously, tell me more. So the first death, right? Oof. I love it. Well, also, Veronica is wearing this sort of fabulous, sort of horrific, like, vest dress that I'm maybe not mad about. Like, the whole time I was like, this is horrible. I might want to try and wear this. <laughs> maybe. Maybe not. Maybe. I don't know. It was on the line. Was, which is always good. Like sure. The same thing with Clueless where you're like, these clothes are insane now, but I kind of like them. But it like works. You wear the, you wear the garment, you know? Wear the, sell the garment. Yes, yeah, sell the garment. Um, and they go to Head Heather's house. I forget her last name, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And it's a whole thing with the Drano and oh, how we're going to make her blow chunks. Right. Orange juice and milk. Orange juice and milk or the Drano or the orange juice and milk and the Drano back forth, back forth. And I love the thing. They go into her bedroom and she's wearing this very ornate sleeping gown. Silk sleeping gown with this comforter and the, with the bows on it and her hair. It was well, very... Well, it's like this huge bedroom. It but the bed is like a twin. It was very like Sleeping Beauty. Like, yes. It was silly, silly, yes. silly. This whole sequence I just love where it's like, you know, of course he goes, oh, well, she's too chicken. I knew this stuff would be too intense for her. You think I'll drink it just because you call me chicken? Yeah. Well, you really, you think I'm gonna fall for you calling me chicken? Just give it to me. <laughs> it's like, oh, so it worked. Um, I mean, you would think that, like, immediately upon smelling it, she wouldn't touch it. Like, you would it's, smell Drano that it would be like, this smells lethal. It's a fantasy. Sure. I mean, like, a dark fantasy. Right. Grimm's fairy tale. Oh, Grimm. Get it, it was Grimm. Grimm. <laughs> I, mean, I don't think we really need another film about the Holocaust, do we? It's like, how many have there been? You know, we get it. It was grim. Move on. Um, but anyway, so then she just like croaks immediately. Coronuts! I feel like it would have uh, been less immediate, but you know. What you I thought so too. It'd probably be like, oh my god, oh my god, like spasm, spasm, spasm! Call poison control! Exactly. I can't believe it. I just killed my best friend. And your worst enemy. Same difference. And then they would have, and then they would have tried pumping her stomach, and then they'd be like, oh, it's too late, how did she get Drano? And they'd be like, well, you see, we were trying to make her th throw up, but like, then the Drano got in there, and then the movie wouldn't be very good. <laughs> but Veronica has the talent of doing everybody's handwriting. Thank God. To me, though, suicide is the natural answer to the myriad of problems life has given me. That's good, but Heather would never use the word myriad. She missed that on the vocab last week, the vocab test. Well, perfect, that'll be a perfect allegory for her, like, sad, tragic life or whatever. I just love that, like, whole exchange. <laughs> and then the teacher. I must say I was impressed to see that she made proper use of the word myriad in her suicide note. To this day, myriad. I know what it means. There you go. Help me on the SATs. Ah! Well, in this whole conversation about, like, how their them killing their fellow classmates is giving them more depth or more heart or more like right, whatever yes, like yes like it, oh my god she's more popular and more she's like more interesting than, than ever like oh my god who knew that she was so vulnerable and deep or whatever because she killed herself suicide gave heather depth kurt a soul ram a brain like that's so true yes. in a very sick and twisted sad way but that's like so true well, we haven't talked about the parents and the pate. Oh my god. God damn, will somebody tell me why I smoke these damn things? Because you're an idiot. Oh yeah, that's it. 
You too. Great, Pate, but I'm gonna have to motor if I wanna be ready for that funeral. Oh, you too. You too. I love that her parents, I love that her parents are in the movie. Mm -hmm. Because often, one of my biggest problems with teen movies is that the parents just don't exist, and you're like, what world is this? I love that her parents are just sort of these like daft, vapid. So, what was the first day after Heather's suicide like? So, how was your first day after Heather's suicide treating you? <laughs> It's such a good contrast of like, like literally at some point Christian Slater goes over to her parents and is like, and convinces them that Veronica is going to kill herself. And they're like, okay, well go up to your room by yourself. I'm going to make lasagna. You know, like just. He said that we should keep you away from sharp objects, uh, closed garage doors, chemical uh, no, substances, prescription, pre drugs. prescription drugs. And his dad is such a dick. Oh my god, his dad is so gross. So gross. But it makes sense. Yep. Like, even though it's a caricature. You're like, yeah, that's... Like, and that's what I like about his character is that at first he's just this sort of bad boy, crazy person, and then you're like, oh, he's got like a fucked up home life. Oh, this is really fucked. Oh, his dad's also like a sociopath? Oh, and you're like, oh, okay, this is like, at least there's a reason. I put a Norwegian in the boiler room. <laughs> Masterful. So his dad murdered his wife, right? Well, no, she committed suicide because he was such a fucking asshole. Last time I saw my mom, she was waving from a library window in Texas. Right, Dad? That's that's the, how the movie tells it. Sure. That she purposely walked, walked into, into the library the building because, knowing it was going to be a book. But, like, you could say, you know, like, the husband slowly killed her by being such a fucking asshole. Sure. Or it could be selective memory. I just, I don't know. To me, it seemed like, oh, maybe he killed her. So Heather Chandler has died. They're going to her funeral. Um, Ortho from Beetlejuice is the priest. Remember this guy, the like interior decorator from Beetlejuice? I saw Beetlejuice once as a child and that's it. And they're all sort of being teenagers at a funeral like in a way right because yes. like when you're a teenager you're like death like whatever you're like i don't even care about this you know in a certain to a certain degree one of the other heathers is like washing her hands in the holy water oh, and like, yes, yes, like fixing her hair and she's like what are you doing tonight i don't know morning maybe watch some tv it's just like so spot on in its sickness yeah if that makes sense and then that whole like double date scene where they're tipping cows. There's, oh, there's God, a very yeah. like dark frankness to this movie that's like simultaneously very sad and very funny and very real. Well, yeah. Basically, Veronica is like just agrees to go out on this double date with Chip and Dale, whatever, not the, <laughs> the two jocks. I forget their name, Brick and Jet, I, something, sure. something moronic. I can't even remember. And she is like, fuck this. The, one well, of the then, guys just passes out. There's this shot that's like quite tragic and dark and sad and funny and real all at the same time. But basically Veronica's like walking towards the camera. Her date is completely passed out. And other Heather is basically being date raped behind her. And she is just sort of like, well, Christian Slater, you want to go on a date? Like, you want to get out of here? Like, the but it's so real. It rides that line and it's very weird, but like yeah. I feel like without those kind of commentaries, this movie wouldn't be as powerful or funny or yes. real or whatever. I do agree with all of it. I think it's really interesting. Like you said, I think sometimes it's like the place where you're in yeah. that either makes it funnier or not as funny. Yeah. And like for whatever reason, the past time watching this, the ick factor for me, I was, was like, higher. oh, but like she's getting like raped behind you. Like she doesn't. Right. Doesn't... And it's not to say that that's funny, but just like the commentary that it's making totally. is very interesting. Yes. And it's done in a comedic, I mean, it is done in a comedic way that it's like so blase about like, oh, and I'm just going to like walk away, like, or whatever. Right. It's comedic and I get it, but it's also dark and twisted. Let's go get a slushie. But then they're talking about um, killing the two jocks, but Veronica thinks that it's just going to be a joke, right? Right. And he's they're, talking they're about They're like these, these little shallow World War II bullets. These ick, ick luge bullets or something. I'm probably saying that wrong. Ich liege. And basically, in German, that means I'm lying. These are ick luge bullets. My grandfather snared a shitload of them back in WW2. They're like tranquilizers. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. let's do this. This will be fun. I mean, I think it's sort of her journey into darkness. 
essentially. Like, she's... On some level, she knows, right? Do you think? Her friend is dead. If this was the first one... I guess that's true. If this like, was you the wouldn't first trust one, this dude who murdered your friend. No. But she's, like, crazy in love, I guess. I've got no control over myself when I'm with JD. Are we going to prom or to hell? That sex out on the croquet court is just so good. Thank you. That was my uh, first game of strip croquet. It's very frank about, like, she's just like, yeah, and then I had sex with him. Sure. Like, it's very just rated R, high school frankness. And I, you know what's interesting? I was thinking about that, though, too, that it was like, I wish that more movies were a little bit less restrained in yeah. talking about, like, high school. So often it's, like, this idealized, like, you know, kind of... Sanitized. Sanitized, exactly. It's so sanitized. And it's like, well, we can have it be real and be, like, cute or whatever. I feel like just every time a sort of real high school movie comes out, whatever, it gets blamed for, you know, oh, it influenced this these people to do something horrible, or it was the reason that da 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 da, -da. Well, maybe it did. Maybe it will influence them to, like, practice safe sex, because then this girl who doesn't do that because she didn't have the proper sexual education got fucking pregnant. Where's that movie? It's called For Keeps. Uh, starring Molly Ringwald. God damn it. <laughs> Bitch! <laughs> so anyway, back to... Back to Heathers. Brick and Stout, whatever oh their names god. are. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. They're talking about... They're like, oh, we're gonna... We're gonna convince them that Veronica wants to have a three-way with them. Yes. But we're actually gonna make it seem like they're, like, lovers. Gay lovers. It's the <laughs> list of things that are gay. Once again... It's like, it's like too much. It's like too much where you're like... This is so spot on and so hilarious and so insulting all at the same time. Yep. And I love it. Yep. An issue with stud puppy. <laughs> a candy dish. Joan Crawford postcard. All right. Now here's the one perfecto thing I picked up. Mineral water. The mineral water really does it. Oh, come on. A lot of people drink mineral water. It's come a long way. Yeah, but this is Ohio. It's like, remember in the 90s when that whole thing about like, oh, if you have an earring and... On the right, whichever thing. on the right no, side like, or the left side, I forget. I forget which side it was, but remember that was like a big, that was like a thing, like it was like a big deal. It's like the handkerchief in the back of your pocket or whatever. Well, it depends on what color it is and which pocket. Exactly. My God, suicide. Why? Does this answer your question? And then I just love what the cops is like. Well, this explains it all. <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> That makes sense now. It's the mineral water. <laughs> so then they so they meet them in like some forest. So should I just whip it out? Or? Well, I, I've made a circle on each side of the clearing. I made these circles. I made these circles. Stand inside these circles and get naked. And they're like, okay. Strip. What about you? I was kind of hoping you could rip my clothes off me, sport. And then they murder them. So, um, she misses. Christian Slater's like, boom, you're dead. And then she's like, oh, and then she's he, like, whatever, it's still hilarious because they're gonna like the look on his he face. He basically tells her it's gonna be like the Romeo and Juliet potion, right? right? Like, yes, it'll seem like they're dead and then they'll wake up or whatever. Which also, though, I did okay, so this was where, sure, to be fair, it's like maybe she knew a little bit more than she's like, oh, so they'll just be lying there bleeding, and I'm like, bleeding to death in a field until someone finds them. I heard it that time. What? Another gunshot from the woods. Oh, shit. Let's roll. I think this is my favorite line of the movie, pretty much. And the delivery is so good. They're, well, Veronica and Christian Slater go and pretend to be making out. Right. Right, to, like, throw the cops off. And this girl who, I think this is her only line in the movie, at least it's her best line in the movie, runs up to the two Heathers and goes, Did you hear? School's canceled today because Kurt and Ram killed themselves in a repressed homosexual suicide pact. No way. Something about the every time yes. it's the funniest <laughs> line. Did you hear? No way. <laughs> but then the next best line. Well, then the next one. So they're at the funeral of Kurt and Ram, and they're in their football helmets with the football. I mean, it's just it's a joke. Like it's so yeah. clearly a satire for me that it's like this is hysterical. 
<laughs> the dad giving the eulogy. I love my dead gay son. Like I say that all the time. I love my dead gay son. Teenage suicide. Don't, Don't do, do it. it. <laughs> Teenage suicide. Don't do it. Teenage. That's it. We're breaking up. Well, then they try to also make this comment that like teenage love makes you crazy. Sure. And like I... also comment on the sort of like 50s, you know, rebel without a cause, like, oh, teen angsty love will right. make you drag race to your death. You know what I mean? It was sort of doing that too, which was great. When she's like in the car, <laughs> they've killed Kurt and Ram, and she's just like, <sighs> and she like burns her hand on the cigarette. Yes. And he likes a cigarette <laughs> on her hand. Like, it's just so good. Which wouldn't work. Well, no, absolutely not, but it's just so good. And that, like, after Heather, the head Heather dies, of course, like, uh, Shannon Doherty Heather is just gonna, like, a Hydra replace yep. her with a new head, right? And, and that sort of thing, like, Heather, why are you such a mega bitch? Why are you such a mega bitch? Because I can be. Veronica, why are you pulling my dick? Well, and the, so they're, they're planning on killing Shannon Doherty, or at least... We're led to believe they're planning on yes. killing Sharon Dory. She's always reading Moby Dick. Right. right, yes. But apparently it was supposed to be Catcher in the Rye, which would have been more pro like more mm. pretentious and stupid. Although maybe Moby Dick is more pretentious. I don't know. I don't know. They're both pretty pretentious. But I it's just so it's like I underlined meaningful passages in Moby Dick, so it'll really look like she killed herself. I just underlined the word Eskimo. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like so good. Eskimo. Eskimo. Heather Duke underlined a lot of things in this copy of Moby Dick, but I believe the word Eskimo is the key to understanding Heather's pain. That stupid fake funeral. Oh, okay, with the 3D glasses, everyone's <laughs> yeah, just like. <gasps> it was almost like it was almost like marriage. Marriage. It's like what it's brings us together together. today. Yeah. Eskimo, okay. Eskimo. Well, and I feel like particularly, I mean, I always think Christian Slater is basically Jack Nicholson. Yeah. But particularly in this movie, he's like doing Jack Nicholson. Yeah. He didn't say Simon Says. Like Jack Nicholson in The Shining. Nag, 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 nag. But like if he was like a sexy teenager. <laughs> Jack Nicholson doing James Dean in The Shining as Christian Slater. It's a lot. Yeah. It's a lot of things happening. I think you just made like the... Um, Venn diagram? No, like the anarchy. What is, what is the... Um... Oh, the like pentagram? Yeah. I didn't mean to. <laughs> <gasps> we should definitely write for a review the craft. Fuck yes. He's going to murder her, but she then preemptively fake suicides. Yeah. So she could stop him. Well, and then I do like this idea that, like, they're making fun of the fact that, oh, if popular people are committing suicide, committing suicide is going to become popular. Heather! What are you trying to do? Kill me? What are you trying to do? Sleep? And Martha Dumbstock, Dumb Truck, tries to kill herself, and, right. like, it becomes, like, a, like a fad, almost, yes. right? And, like, how ridiculous is this? Christian Slater, of course, like, like a James Bond villain monologues yes, yes. his evil plan to her dead body. <laughs> and then he's gonna blow up the entire school at the pep rally. So then there's this whole confrontation in the boiler room. How do I turn off the goddamn bomb, asshole? Fuck you! And she shoots off his middle finger. Oh my god, yes, it's so good! I mean, of course, now she's a great shot. She's great at it. She said practice. Maybe she was aiming for him and it was just... She was aiming for his head and she hit his middle finger in some sort of ironic <laughs> moment. I like it. Other people that were considered for Christian Slater's part, apparently Jim Carrey was considered. Absolutely not. How old was he? Like once bitten age era, like baby tiny little guy. I feel like that'd be weird. It would be really bad. Yeah. Because as much as I love Jim Carrey, not really sexy. It would wouldn't have been work. like goofy. Sure, right. And it would have been the wrong tone. Wouldn't have worked. Judd Nelson could have worked the bad boy angle, but once again, not really sexy. And then Jason Bateman. 
I think that would have been... How old was Jason Bateman? A little baby, tiny baby boy. Was he like acting? Yeah. What was he in? I don't even know. Family Ties? Or was that Justine Bateman was in Family Ties? He was in Teen Wolf 2. Oh. When the wolf boxed. Oh my god. Instead of play basketball. Oh boy. That's a lot. You know who probably could have totally slayed this role? John Cusack. Oh, maybe. I think that could have been, and then you would have like been like, yeah, I get it, because you're really like cute and vulnerable. Like you would have been more like a little bit oh, less creeped out by him. Oh, he's sort of like really cute, and maybe he's not really bad. Oh no. Yeah, that's true. Who? Heath Ledger. Totally. Totally. He has the sexy part where you're like, no, but you oh. can't be that awful. Oh my God, you're like really creepy, the Joker. Like you know, it would have been like, yes, ten things I hate about you meets the Joker. Heath Ledger and Heathers. I love it. Yeah. I did notice this upon this viewing. So they have this fight in the boiler room and they get outside and she disables the bomb, or so she thinks. Right. And then they're outside on the steps and he has a bomb attached to him. And the whole time I was really distracted because there's like these weird shadowy paintings behind him on the wall. Remember? Those, oh, like, yes. Weird, like, they're like these they weird... They don't have faces. They're no, just shadows. They're just like, they're like silhouette painted like spray painted onto the building but like weird shapes i mean i'm sure that was just like part of whatever school they were filming at but i noticed it this time yeah. i just love that he blows up and she's like yeah and then her and martha dumbstock have this moment of clarity together so you want to like skip prom and just watch some movies my date for the prom kind of flaked out on me i was wondering if you were doing anything that night maybe we could rent some new releases pop some popcorn I'd like that. Can I tell you a couple of other movies that this director directed? Oh boy. Because I was shocked. Because you're never going to make another Heathers. Like, it just can't happen. Sure. Maybe some other form of it or sure. some other similar black comedy right. teenage high school thing. But, like, it's just, it's never going to happen again. Like, we thought Vampire Academy could maybe, you know, have a similar vibe, right? It failed horribly. <laughs> I would say the closest thing, again, is Mean Girls, but in a very lighter... Very different way. Yeah, more yeah. mainstream, not as... I mean, so it's, like, not the same. It's not the same. So, Michael Lehman, the director, also directed Hudson Hawk, which I secretly love as a child, even though it's terrible. It started my obsession with Richard E. Grant. I mean, what can I say? He also directed My Giant. Remember with Billy Crystal and that, like, really tall guy? It was, like, a big deal when that movie came out. I don't think so. I don't even remember what the plot of that movie was. Was he some kind of producer and he's like, I'm going to get you on my TV show. I don't remember what the plot of that movie was. <laughs> no it was idea. like, wouldn't it be funny if Billy Crystal and this really tall, it was basically twins. Height discrepancies. No, oh, anyway. I no idea so what movie you're talking time. about. <laughs> he did Truth About Cats and Dogs. One of your favorites. Right? I mean, I think we have our kindred spirit. <laughs> <laughs> he did Airheads, which I also love. 40 Days, 40 Nights. Which With I, Josh Hartnett? With Josh Hartnett and, and girl from Night's Tale, whose name is... <laughs> I couldn't tell you. And, because I said so, remember that terrible Diane Keaton movie Wait, with Mandy Moore? With Mandy Moore! Where they're like, isn't she like a singer? And they're like just, trying to get somewhere in LA in traffic. That's like all I really remember. I just remember, she lives in Venice. Yeah! And Diane Keaton. I mean, that was, yeah. the, that was the reason I saw that movie. That movie was bad. Oh, it was very bad. Yeah. But I definitely thought so it was. So it was 40 Days and 40 Nights, to be great. honest. It wasn't not great. It wasn't great. Not very good. I'm going to say it. I'm not a huge Josh Hartnett fan. He was never my... He mm. always had the Frankenstein haircut, and I was like, no thanks. Sure. Mm -mm. Even I remember seeing Pearl Harbor in the theater, and when he dies, spoilers for Pearl Harbor, no one cares, um, everybody was like, ah! and I was like, yeah, I mean. I have two weird things about Pearl Harbor. I'm excited. The only things I remember, I think I've only seen that movie once. Maybe twice. Was it in the theater? It was in theaters. Me too. The only thing I remember was I really liked it, and I really, really, really had to pee so bad in the whole car ride home, my bladder. Why didn't you I, pee? Because it was, it was like one of those things where it's was like, oh, I kind of have to pee. And then it was like, you I was in the car and I was like, oh my God. It was like every bump, like my bladder was just like, I remember the pain now, 15 years later. That's, <laughs> that's how bad that's it was. That's how I feel about the remake of Sabrina. <laughs> I had to pee. <laughs> 
<laughs> so bad in that movie. So I blame my bladder for the fact that I bought Pearl Harbor on DVD. What? <laughs> Why did I do that? You were like, it was so intense, I couldn't stay in my seat. It was romantic. That's a mess. It That's like some Nicholas Sparks shit. When's the next Nicholas Sparks movie? I don't know, but I am ready. It needs to be better than the choice. Denise Stenobi, I am ready. Yes, it all comes for a circle. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> so anyway, I love this movie. It's fucking great. It's classic. It's cult. It's crazy. It's campy. It's a satire. I mean, it's kind of everything. You certainly have to be in the right mood. Yeah. It's certainly dark. Yeah. But it is really funny and fun and wacky and there's... Quotes for days. I mean, days. I love my dead Did gay son! <laughs> What's your damage, Heather? You're such a pillowcase. <laughs> I'm excited about it. Good. You <coughs> bought Pearl Harbor on DVD? DVD. Maybe me a bowl. Blu-ray or DVD? DVD. <laughs> okay, that's better. Did you hear? School's canceled today because Kurt and Ram killed themselves in a repressed homosexual suicide pact. No way! Thank you.